With our footers poured and the concrete set, all we need now is our ICFs or insulated concrete forms and here they come. If you're not familiar with ICFs, they're basically concrete forms made out of styrofoam. Plastic webbing holds the inner and outer halves of the styrofoam blocks together and also supports rebar internally. The blocks stack together a lot like Legos. We're stacking the blocks four high, which makes our stem wall five feet four inches as the blocks are 16 inches tall by 13 and a half wide by four feet long. This is what our finished stem wall form looks like, a lot like a giant igloo cooler, which makes me wonder how much beer it could hold. Since the form walls are five foot four inches sitting on top of an eight inch footer, we built a catwalk around the interior so that we could reach and work at the top of the wall comfortably. Here we've put in bracing around the interior and some around the exterior of the forms and are now working to lay out where the anchor bolts will be. The anchor bolts need to be spaced a maximum of six feet on center and between four and 12 inches from the end of each seal plate board. Our seal plate is going to be made out of two by eight by 16 foot pressure treated wood so it took a bit of ciphering to figure out exactly where each of the anchor bolts would be. We could have just drilled them afterwards and used epoxy or expansion anchors, but I wanted to go ahead and get them placed immediately after the concrete was poured. Having neighbors volunteering their time to help me put this together is really very helpful, but has made it difficult for me to do much videoing because I feel kind of odd about, hey, yeah, you guys work on my project while I video you. Um, so they've been great though. They've been awesome. I just, yeah, fortunately have not been able to video, um, step by step, the construction of our forms for the concrete, which is coming tomorrow at 10 o'clock and I am nervous, but let me turn this around and show you what we've been doing anyway. And it's taken us about four days to put up all the ICF, get all the rebar in it and bracing. This is a lot of bracing more than what. I've seen most people do and even what the uh, vendor for this ICF told us we needed, but I just am um, very uncomfortable, very nervous about um, putting a lot of concrete in these tall walls. They're um, five foot four inches tall. You see down there in the middle, we have some forms set up that will support a beam going down the middle to give the floor a little bit more, more support. We're using a lot of rebar in this. Um, originally, I was thinking of, for this height, maybe three horizontal, number four rebar, half inch rebar, um, and then vertical spacing every four or five feet. We actually have, and there's four blocks of this ICF forms, uh, and there is a horizontal rebar in each one of them, two at the top. I think you can see two of them at the top and then vertically we have them spaced every two feet so should be ample uh, rebar I would think. We've noticed a very strange phenomenon with these ICF forms. A very light breeze blowing across them they make this very strange UFO sort of sound. I'm going to turn the camera around and I hope this will pick up on audio I'm not sure with the all the cricket noise around. Can you hear that? So I'm absolutely beat. This has been a long week getting ready for this and I'm exhausted. Um, usually go to bed, can't sleep anyway because I'm so nervous about the pour. But I'm gonna try to get some sleep tonight, hoping that we have everything ready and uh, cement truck should be here the first one at 10 o'clock they're gonna bring it in three different trucks seven yards a truck total of 21 yards going into this and they're giving us 30 minutes spacing so I hope 30 minutes is enough I uh, would like to do this in lifts too at least two lifts so bring one up half of it and then the second lift top it off here's the truck coming up the hill it's a little early it's supposed to be here at 10 and it's 9 30 now but we have a crew starting to assemble uh, Two of the neighbors that have helped set up the forms and helped do the footer pour are here and another neighbor has showed up and supposedly a couple more neighbors or friends of neighbors are going to come 
help. I'm still nervous. I can't believe I'm this nervous. But I'll assure me, don't worry, it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna be fine. But you know, it's uh, it's kind of a big deal to me. So um, I'm hoping it goes well. First of three trucks has arrived and driver got out and kind of surveyed it and did suggest since there's three trucks coming that we pour it in three separate lifts, try to minimize pressure on the on the bottom of the on the bottom of the uh, of the form. So we'll go with that. That makes perfect sense to me. So what they decided to do is we have these inner forms down the middle for a support beam down the middle of the structure. They decided to dump some of this first concrete into a wheelbarrow to fill them up just to see how wet this concrete is. If it needs to be a little wetter or if it's good to go as is. And I have no idea because I've never done this before. Don, the neighbor who's up there doing it, he probably has the most experience with this and so we'll we will turn to his guidance. Pretty tight quarters for moving a wheelbarrow, but John is doing it. So we're no, we're close to being done with the uh, first truck, and the second truck has been here for a while. Just kind of worried about that. 30 minute spacing was a little too tight for us. I guess this is why a pump truck would be nice. So if you're gonna do this yourself, and if you're gonna afford or have access to a pump truck, I think it'll still save you a lot of grief, but we're doing the best we can. To get a pump truck in here was gonna be anywhere from two to $5,000 at her, and that was just out of our budget. So here John is running a vibrator into the concrete to get it to flow better. Marissa is actually holding the base unit for the vibrator. And I'd like to note that we were told to not use anything more than a one inch vibrator and then to use it just quickly, momentarily on off for fear of creating too much excess pressure and blowing out the forms. We're having to run this a lot more than what I was expecting or hoping just to make sure there are no voice to get the concrete to flow down through all the rebar and webbing. As much and as continuously as we're having to use it, it really makes me nervous that we are going to have a blowout, but so far, so good. We have an excellent crew, actually more people than we need, which allowed me to sneak up here and get just a little bit of video, showing what we're doing. Back on this short wall right here, we actually filled it clear to the top. We're only gonna do a third of the fill, third of, fill a third of the wall at a time, but it just came out so fast, and I think it's a kind of a new truck driver, and we're all new too. Um, but he didn't understand what we were saying, and you know, we ended up filling clear to the top. I was so afraid of that wall blowing out, but it did not. Um, and things are going along pretty good and we're vibrating. Let's start vibrating a lot more than I think that we were supposed to. Uh, but again, it's been holding up fine. So these forms are tough, they're really tough. Of course, we do have a lot of bracing, but now these forms are really good so far. When 
we had poured the concrete, I didn't show this before, but this was, we were, took forever to do concrete. We had three trucks of concrete. The third truck was here before we'd even emptied the first one. So by the time we finished up the wall, filling the top of it, the concrete was starting to set and it was really rough and hard to smooth out. And so I ended up taking a diamond uh, concrete grinder and ground it smooth and it actually ground really nicely and actually kind of pretty with the different colored rocks that are ground. And it turned out much better than what I feared. There's a few spots like this one here where you can see it's kind of kind of got a little bit of a of an indent uh, where it didn't form very well but overall it looks great it smoothed out really well and, and turned out better than i thought what a relief to have the stem wall successfully completed without any serious issues here's what i've learned from this project having good neighbors that are willing to just jump in and lend a hand is absolutely priceless 30 minutes spacing between concrete trucks is not near enough time when pouring from the chute, which leads me to the next lesson learned. If possible, hire a concrete pump. It will make your pour go so much better. ICF forms are amazingly strong considering they're made from styrofoam, at least if they're braced properly. Next up, we'll be placing a water barrier on the forms as well as installing the French drain seal place and hopefully get a start on floor joists and subfloor. We'll just have to see how that goes. If you've enjoyed seeing our off-grid build progress, please hit the like button below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Until we see you again, stay safe and keep building your dreams.